This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. We're going to find the y-intercept and any x-intercepts of this parabola, y equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. Now, any parabola in this form will have a y-intercept because you know, the parabolas are either going to go up or down, and so you can put any value in for x will eventually get through the y um, intercept someplace. On the other hand, there might not be any x-intercepts because you might have a parabola completely above the x-axis going up, and so if the vertex point is above the x-axis and it's going up, it's never going to cross the x-axis. You also might have a parabola below the y-axis, maybe here, and again, it's never going to go through the um, x-axis. So th both of these do go through the y-axis, like no matter where this parabola is, even if it's way over here, it eventually is going to keep going over here eventually. It's going to be very high up there. It doesn't go in this straight line, but it will eventually go through the y-axis. So we'll always be able to find the y-intercept, okay? And that's always going to be the easiest one to do, so let's do that one first, the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, it's always the same no matter what equation you have, whether we're looking at the equation of a parabola, of a line, of a circle, or any other object at all in the xy plane, we're going to let x equal zero. So we're going to take this equation and put in zero for x. So we have y equals, we're putting in zero, right? Zero plus three squared minus four. And then we just solve. So we're doing the order of operations. Zero plus three is three, so we have three squared minus 4, that's 9 minus 4, or 5. So what happened? When x is 0, I got that there was one y value. That will always happen on a function. This, is a, this parabola would be a function. So the y-intercept is 0, 5, right? That's the y-intercept. Now, to get the x-intercept, we're going to let y equals zero, because everywhere on the x-axis, the corresponding y-coordinate is zero. So y will always be zero in all the order pairs on the x-axis. So let's do that now. All right, so we're going to find the x-intercept. Now, there might be no x-intercepts, there might be one x-intercept, or there might be two x-intercepts on a parabola. So it says let y equal zero. All right, so we go up to this equation and we put in zero for y. So zero equals x plus three squared minus four. Now we have to solve this. At this point, there's different ways you can solve this. One is to simplify the right-hand side and notice you have a quadratic. Another way you could do it is notice you have something squared minus a number, so if I add the 4 to the other side, I've got something squared equals a number. We could take the square roots of both sides. So I'm going to do that method first, right? And in fact, instead of writing 0 equals x plus 3 squared minus 4, I'm just going to switch what's on the left and right hand side, because a lot of people like to have the variable on the left hand side. x plus 3 squared minus 4 equals 0. That's really the same equation. And then, if I add 4 to both sides, I have x plus 3 squared equals 4. All right, now we can take the square roots of both sides. So I'm going to put the square root over both sides. And when you do this, remember, when you take the square root of something squared, it's really the absolute value. But what you could do is write x plus 3, and you're going to do plus or minus what's on the square root on the right-hand side. That's a little bit of a shortcut. So we have x plus 3 equals plus or minus, so there's going to be two values on the right-hand side, plus or minus the square root of 4 would just be 2. And this breaks up into two separate equations, x plus 3 equals 2, or x plus 3 equals negative 2. And if I subtract 3 from both sides, that gives me x equals negative 1. I do the same thing for this other equation. Now, 
be careful here, this is negative 2 minus 3, or negative 2 plus negative 3, that's negative 5. So for my x-intercepts up here, I have two different, two different values of x when I let y equal 0. So this has two x-intercepts. One is negative 1, 0, and the other one is negative 5, 0. So for this equation, we found our y-intercept, remember, that was the first thing we did. Our y-intercept was 0, 5, and our x-intercepts were negative 1, 0, and negative 5, 0. Now, just to see how you could make sense of this, let's go on. All right, so here's our equation of the parabola. We've got the y-intercept at 0, 5. We have the x-intercept at negative 1, 0 and negative 5, 0. Let's see if that makes sense, given what else we know about the parabola. This parabola is in vertex form. So the vertex is, well, negative 3, negative 4, right? And so the vertex is over here at negative 3, negative 4, so remember that's the axis of symmetry here. There's the vertex, and notice since it's positive in front here, this means the parabola is going up, so that's something else you know. And it says the x-intercepts are negative 1, 0, which is right here, and negative 5, 0, which is right here, and it says the y-intercept is up at 5, so it does seem to match what we would think the parabola might look like. So I'm not asking you to draw the parabola, but you can get a rough estimate of what's going on. There's something else interesting about the x-intercepts. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line directly in between the two x-intercepts. So you can also check um, the axis of symmetry. Let me write that out. So if we look over here at this graph, notice the axis symmetry is x equals negative 3, okay, which you can get by taking what's in parentheses here, x plus 3 equals 0 means x equals negative 3. And I'm saying another way to check the axis symmetry is the average of the x-intercepts. So it's x equals, all right, if we just take the average of the x-intercepts, that means you're going to add the x-intercepts and divide by 2, negative 1 plus negative 5 over 2 is negative 6 over 2 or negative 3. So there you go. That's the equation x equals negative 3. One last thing I want to go over is when we found the x-intercepts, let's just go back. We did it this method where I took the square roots of both sides. You could also take this equation, 0 equals x plus 3 squared minus 4, or x plus 3 squared minus 4 equals 0, and just simplify the left-hand side and then factor. So that's also another way to solve a quadratic. So let's do it that way. So an another method for solving a quadratic, you have your choice, is you could multiply this out. Remember this is x plus 3 times x plus 3 minus 4 equals 0. So if I do the FOIL method, I get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 minus 4 equals 0, and that gives you x squared plus 6x plus 5 equals 0. And now we have a quadratic in standard form, and to solve that, you can either factor or use the um, quadratic formula. This factors easily, x plus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0 set each factor equal to 0, subtract 5 from both sides for this one, subtract 1 from both sides for this one, and you get the same intercepts, the same x-intercepts we did doing it the other way. So once you set y equal to 0, there's more than one method for you to solve a quadratic, and it's up to you which way you think is easiest. So for this problem, our final answer is we got for the x-intercepts negative 1, 0 and negative 5, 0. And for our y-intercept, we had 0, 5. Let's just get this out of the way. And 
that lets us know that this parabola had two x-intercepts, had one y-intercept, and that's what they were. Now we're going to also, um, on other videos, do ones where it's not so easy to figure out the x-intercepts. You might have no x-intercepts, or you might have to approximate the x-intercept because you have to use the quadratic formula and it's irrational. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.